Welcome back to High Tech Heroes. Our guest today is Dr. Lippold Hocken, who's showing us how to use uh, Lippold's interactive music editor, Lime, I guess. So. Okay, well, uh, actually now I want to show some sine wave synthesis that we've been working on. Mm -hmm. That signal processor we showed, the platypus, is uh, what's going to make the sound here. I have a program written in there to generate lots of sine waves. And here's a graph of uh, what this looks like. In sine wave synthesis, you play a lot of sine waves to make the sound. I'm going to show you what the first sine wave sounds like here. So you just sum up all the sine waves, like right. uh, Fourier. Right, this is a Fourier method. Mm -hmm. So it's a little hard to hear over TV, I'm sure, but you have this graph here, and uh, the amplitude over time varies like this. That only sounded like one sine wave, though. Right. I'm just playing the very first so we'll, one here. We'll play I'm it again. Okay. Now I'm going to go I play the. Play that time, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and play the second one. Now this is just okay. Mm -hmm. And then play the third one. Okay, that's it. So that's like an octave and a fifth. Right. And this is the fourth one. Now the graphs you see here, those are only amplitude graphs. So there's also a pitch graph that goes with us, which I'm not showing on the screen. And this is the fifth one here, which is a lot louder than the fourth. Mm -hmm. Now I can play those four, to, uh, those first five together. Uh, it's, alone, they don't sound like much, but when I play them together, you can already hear that this is a violin-like sound. Now I can add the uh, a bunch more to this, and so that's an open A on a violin. And it's bowed, you can even hear. Right, I it's mean, a bowed it's open A, and. Uh, That's in tune. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, so that's how we do this. We play lots of sine waves. Now, mm -hmm. the one problem with sine wave synthesis is it takes a lot of computation because uh, if you play a violin note, you might take 30 or 40 harm, uh, overtones, but on a low piano, uh, uh, you can easily need up to 80 for uh, to play a low piano note. 80 harmonics. 80 harmonics. So the problem is, say you have piano playing with an orchestra. Uh, you might have thousands of well, sine waves you have to synthesize. Well, are they really all harmonics, or some of them just, uh, you know, they talk about partials because some things are not exactly harmonically right. related. Right. In fact, uh, no instrument has exactly harmonic sounds, but they're close to harmonics. We okay. call them harmonics. Uh, as I said, all these have pitch variation graphs, and some instruments are mm -hmm. stronger than others. And the pitch variation also depends on how loud the instrument is. Like on a piano, the uh, harmonic, or the overtones or partials detune more if you play louder notes than if you play quieter notes. In any case, if you have a whole orchestra, um, there's a lot of problems. How do you make thousands of sine waves? There's a lot of different approaches. One I'm interested in uses psychoacoustics. And the idea there is that, well, if you play the piano note alone, sure, you have to play 80 sine waves to really right. synthesize it. But if you play it with a whole orchestra, some of those sine waves aren't audible. And so if the rest of the orchestra is playing, if you can just figure out by awesome. algorithm which ones are audible and which ones aren't, the ones that aren't audible, you don't have to synthesize. It's not just the loudest ones? It's not just the loudest ones. It, there's uh, a lot of complicated theory behind what you can hear and what you can't hear. Okay. And it's hard in real time to do that on a computer, to make those decisions. So that's ongoing research. But when I play this violin like this, um, you, I'm actually playing all the harmonics, but, or all the sine wave components. But if I do this, it's already leaving out some of them of the A that you can't uh -huh. hear. So uh -huh. The uh, A is the higher note? The A was the higher note. Yeah, okay. okay, so. Uh, of course, another question is, well, why bother with sine wave synthesis? There's sampling, there's FM. Uh, why pursue this if it's so much computation? Uh, one of the things is that in sine wave synthesis, you can really manipulate your sounds well. In FM, you can't just record a natural sound. That's what you use sampling for. Mm -hmm. So you have a sampling synthesizer. You can record a note like this violin note, but you can't manipulate it very well. You can make it overall louder or quieter. Right. In sine wave synthesis, you actually have control over every single harmonic. So and exactly what it does. How many over sine time. waves can you generate with this box here? A hundred. A hundred sine waves. I could waves. probably program to generate decimal? more. Yeah. That's an odd <laughs> <100 decimal>. number. <laughs> uh, I could probably generate more than that, but right now it, that seems to be enough. Your mm -hmm. ear actually can't perceive that many sine waves all at once, and if you can uh, pick Choose the, the right proper, ones, yeah. Then it probably you'd only need seventy or eighty. Uh, it just depends on how good your algorithm is. Uh, the, mach the machine also does lots of other things besides just compute these sine waves. For instance, it does interpolation. I want to show that here. If I'm on the left side here, it's going to play right. a violin note. If I move the cursor over to the right side here, mm -hmm. move the mouse over, it's going to play a trumpet note. So here is uh, the trumpet sound. And here's the violin sound. 
Now, if I want to, I can interpolate, which means I can uh, play sounds in between. If I have the cursor in the middle, it's going to sound uh, halfway in between the two. I'm going to show an example here where I start on the left and move over to the right. So it's going to go from a violin to a trumpet. Right. So it starts off with a... Or I can, can also... go the other way? Sure. Or I can also play in the middle here. Play a little more trumpet-like. So yeah. there's just different amounts of interpolation. Now, the interpolation is important. Even if you just do vibrato, a sampling synthesizer is just going to either change the pitch or change the volume for vibrato. Mm -hmm. But actually, if you look at instrument vibratos, they're very complicated, and the spectrum changes in complicated ways. And one of the reasons for having interpolation is to do vibrato. I want to show this keyboard here. Uh, we've, got, we've got something, in fact, that we use as a variation called plucked flutes. Right, right. There's all sorts of different things you can do. Yeah. Um, but one of the things we're working on now, this is just a prototype, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't look like it's ready for the marketplace. I probably want to tilt this a little bit like this, I think. Okay. But the idea here is that uh, once we have all this interpolation we can do, we'd like something that's different than a keyboard, than a normal keyboard, okay. you want to where you can only play certain pitches. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? So the idea of this keyboard, you can only play every half step on the normal MIDI keyboard. On this one here, you have a continuous in every direction. You have continuous pitch, uh, you have continuous volume by how hard you press, uh, and then you have so, also another dimension here, which we use for interpolation. So you can put your, yeah, right, you can put your okay. fingers on there. It's got detectors on either end of these bars. Okay, these are little, it's all springs on both ends, and then you've got magnetic detectors. It's what actually, are they? yeah, it's rubber all underneath there, detectors. and there's uh, magnetic detectors. So you can tell how close at each end. So now, right. so you can tell whether, I, whether I, how far I am from the middle. Right. Yeah, you can, you tell, can tell it that way. You can tell how hard I push total. Right. And you can tell how many of these things I push. Well, you can tell, yeah, which, how, how many you push. Now, you want to have pitch very accurate, like if you just rock your finger. And this is pitch this way? Right. That's usually what you'd use for pitch. Eventually, okay. this will be six foot long in this direction. Okay. And if you rock your finger, you want to be able to detect that. Well, what happens is anytime you're pressing on this, uh, uh, on this Bar, continuum, whatever. as we call okay. it here. Okay, continuum. Uh, anytime you press on it, you're actually pressing down several of these bars. So by using cubic interpolation, you can very accurately you can find place the center, the center point of the thing. And even if you just roll your finger a little bit. Uh, okay, now let me get this that. right, though. This is, this is uh, frequency this way. Right. And what's this way? Uh, some timbral dimension. The idea is oh, that, I for see. instance, say you play a chord okay. where you put one finger up higher than the other. And this way, in and out, is really amplitude. It's amplitude, usually. Okay. I mean, it's uh, however you want to program it. It's just an input yeah, device. Okay. Okay. But the idea is that <clears throat> on a violin, for instance, you can bow closer to the bridge and get a brighter sound, or farther from the bridge, get a mellow sound. Right. You could do a similar thing here by placing your fingers. Great. And, uh, okay, Great. that's that project. Well, what else can you show us in two minutes about the uh, music stuff? It's a five-second well, we have a bunch of other equipment that I couldn't bring today. Uh, we just uh, brought these things here. Uh -huh. In our laboratory, we have a bunch of other signal processors. And such. such as? Well, probably the neatest things we got are these Symbolic Sounds Chema workstations. Uh -huh. And that's a, uh, uh, it's a real-time system that uses a graphic language and does symbolic signal processing for you. So that's Chema, K-Y-M-A. Right. right, and it means, it means wave in some language. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, that's, Greek. that's an interactive way to, to build up synthesis algorithms and such and hear mm -hmm. back what you're doing very quickly. And anything else up there? And, uh, well, we have, you know, a bunch of different workstations. We have a bunch of keyboards that we built. We started before MIDI, so we have our own keyboards that we uh -huh. built. Uh -huh. And, uh... Just a lot of stuff, a lot of lots, music stuff. Lots of, lots of stuff. Okay, well, now, your, uh, one of your recent large projects, I guess, is this Zephyr computer, that's right? right? And I think uh, we have a tape of that. Something. Okay. I think uh, our illustrious director here, uh, Mr. Fry, has that and can roll that in. And uh, he uh, he showed me. Oh well, here's okay. the machine oh, yeah, room. Oh, some machine room. Okay. Yeah. And there's